there was a dark and gloomy night. Trump got reelected. Boogity 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 Welcome back to my channel. As you can see from the title, I'm going to tell you all a little story. I have a little story time, a quick little story um, that I got to tell y'all. It's a very crazy story. Well, I think it's a crazy story. How to steal the lift, drive a car. Because you'll find out. Just keep on watching. Keep on watching so you can find out. Yeah. So, this was like 2018. This was Cinco de Mayo. And I remember specifically because I freaking love Cinco de Mayo. It's one of my favorite holidays. I'm not Mexican, but I might as well be. So, every Cinco de Mayo, we go to this little restaurant um, by my house in Maryland. Um, it's called On the Border. It's probably other places, too. Um, they tend to have, they usually have a Cinco de Mayo event. And it's always popping. It's margaritas by the pictures. It's always popping. I always have a DJ, a tent outside every year. But this particular year that we went, it was just me and my husband, my sister and her boyfriend. I'm like, I'm, I invited them like, oh, this place is popping. Like, we're going to have so much fun. We went and it was trash. Like, they didn't have the margarita pictures. They didn't have the big tent outside with the DJ. They didn't even have discounted tacos. How you throwing a Cinco de Mayo event and you don't have discounted tacos? What? Cancel it. Cancel, dead, trash. Just We stayed for a little while. We got like, we got a few margaritas, a few tequila shots. We were just, you know, hanging out probably for a few hours. Then my, me and my husband's homeboy hit us up and was like, hey, come to this lamp come to Gazuza. Now Gazuza is a hookah lounge that's in Washington DC. We were currently in Maryland. So we were like, yeah, let's go because this is whack. My sister and her boyfriend decided not to come with us. I mean, just my husband's name is Deshaun, so I'm just gonna call him by his name. On our way, I text my best friend and for the sake of this video, because I don't know if she want this information out there. I don't for the sake of this video we're gonna call her Pam. Pam! Yes, Pam. So I hit up Pam and I was like, hey, me and Deshaun, we're going to Gazuza. Like, pull up. She said, all right, I'm going to pull up. We got to Gazuza. Met Pam there. Pam brought her home girl. All at the table with our friend who invited us. And for the sake of this video, we're going to call him Martin. Uh, Martin and Pam! All right, all right, we're gonna call him Martin. Martin is a promoter for this particular lounge, Gazuza, and a few other places. Um, so he got us set up real nice. We had our hookah, we had our drinks, blah, blah, blah. Since I was drinking tequila and margaritas all day, I said, let me just stick to that. So I stuck to drinking margaritas and tequila. Where you want, this is where you go if you wanna like chill and not do too much or whatever it's around 10 o'clock and martin's like hey i gotta go to saint because i'm promoting there tonight it's fitting to be a movie up there so pam's like oh you going to saint let's go how well let's go to saint let's go to saint where I am. let's pull up let's go i'm gonna go to saint or whatever and he was like nah he was like no i'm you know he was like no i'm ready to go i want to go home i'm kind of tired so and I rode with him. And I rode with him. So Pam was like, well, you don't got to go. How we could just go with, out with us? I just got here. I just got out. And plus, I haven't seen her in so long. We want to hang out. It could be a girls' night thing anyway. So you can go. 
mind you i rode with him so he was looking like okay well how you gonna get home and she was like don't worry about it i'll take her home right she said she'll take me home right y'all heard follow follow keep following pam said she was gonna take me home then was like all right you sure you gonna go because you know, you be drinking all day. I'm about to ride out. I'm about to go home. I'm about to call it a night. Um, I was like, yeah, I'm grown. I'm going out. I'm going out with my friends. Now I do what I want. Now I do what I want. The husband, I was like, peace. See you on the east side. I'm finna go turn up. So, um, Martin, he hop in his car. We hop in that car and we follow him. We get to St. Soon as we get in there, he like, what y'all want to drink? Pam says, oh, I want a Hennessy and Coke. Homegirl says, oh, I want a Hennessy and Coke. Howard says, oh, I want a Hennessy and Coke. Bruh, you been drinking tequila all day and night. Why? Are you fucking dumb? Why would you ask for Hennessy and Coke? Then someone come up to us and like, let's take a shot. Let's take one shot. One shot turned into two. Two shots turned into three. Three shots turned into four. And we just throwing them back like, we start getting to dancing. Nasty. Whew. All that all that dancing got me thirsty. Let me get a drink. Instead of drinking water, I drink another alcoholic beverage because I'm thirsty. At some point we lost homegirl. Homegirl went missing. We don't know where she went. But we ended up finding her in the bathroom making friends. You know how we are. We go to the bathroom. We just start complimenting people. Hey, girl, your makeup look good. Oh, my God, the bottom of your shoe is so clean. Um, We was having it up. We was drinking. We was dancing. It's the end of the night. It's like 2, 3 o'clock in the morning. Time to go. In the club and you dancing, you having a good time. Although you've been drinking, you don't really feel drunk. It's not until you walk out those doors and the in the wind or the air just hit you where you all of a sudden be like bruh you drunk like as soon as you hit those doors as promised pam is taking me home so she gets to drive i'm like i'm like you okay to drive she's like yeah i'm good like i'm not drunk like i'm good blah 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 she gets to driving about a few inches later oh, nah bruh I can't do this. I'm kind of, I'm, I, I, I ain't even gonna hold you. I ain't even gonna lie. I am drunk. That what we gonna do then? She was like, well, always just, let's just find a nearby hotel. At this time, I worked for a hotel chain. For the sake of this video, we're gonna call them, um, Malibu Hotels. So, Pam is like, let's just stay at a Malibu hotel because at the time I worked there and it, we get discounted rooms and it'd be nothing. It'd be like $40 a night or something. And that's something that we could split. So I'm like, good thinking, Pam. I am the one, the way your son don't think using your brain. Here's one around the corner on 9th Street. So we're like, all right, let's go there. She get the driving. She's getting lost. We start driving in circles. Pam is not feeling well. She's saying that she she's just not in great conditions to be driving. We was lost, and the hotel was right there. It was right there. It was a few moments later. Pam was like, "Fuck this shit. Let's just take a Uber. Let's just take an Uber home." Pam, you told my husband you was gonna take me home. There, our house is on two separate sides of Maryland, so we decided to take two separate Ubers or Lyfts or whatever. Called my Lyft, she called our Uber, we gave our hugs and kisses and said, hey, 
Call me when you get home. Text me when you go home. Make sure you get in safe. And y'all know when y'all get in the car when you drunk, it don't matter what car it is. It don't matter. If you're drunk, as soon as you get a car, what you gonna do? Huh? Exactly. You're gonna fall asleep. I fell asleep for what felt like it felt like I was asleep for long. It felt like I was asleep for like an hour. But in reality, I was only asleep for like third, maybe 30 minutes. But, so you know how when you order your Lyft or your Uber car, it tells you the time it's going to take you to get there. And it tells you the amount, the amount that you have to pay. And it was going to cost me like, let's just say $11 to get there. Boom. Remember that. Follow me. Follow me. Remember that. I wake up. I wake up. And I get up. It was dark. It was nothing but trees surrounding me. It was dark. The car was parked. The Lyft driver wasn't in the driver's seat. The keys wasn't in the ignition. There's nothing. It's like pitch black. It's like no lights, no nothing. No Far yonder, I see like a house that kind of looked like a barn style house. I was in the movie Get Out. It's like, yo, they are about to evacuate my soul and use my shell. This live driver is fitting to sell my shell. He is fitting to auction my shell. I just knew I was done though. I just knew that was it for me. Like, it literally, I laughed. I could laugh about it now, but back then it was not funny. It was the scariest shit ever, and I almost pissed myself. Like, I didn't know where I was at. So, you know how you take your phone and you text somebody and you be like, I am, and it would send your location? So, I texted my husband, and I was like, I am, and it sent my location. And I was like, I was like, babe, where am I? Mind you, this is probably like 3 o'clock going on 4 o'clock, maybe like around 3.30ish. He's like... He's like you're in. He was like you're in McLean, Virginia, and I and I texted back and I said, "Wait, what? What do you mean?" And then he called me. He was like, "What? What are you doing in McLean, Virginia at three or three thirty in the morning? Like, what's going on?" I was like, "I fell asleep in the Lyft driver car on my way home, and I just woke up in the pitch black. Like, I was explaining to him what happened. I'm kidnapped. Like, when he was like." Oh, um, where he was like, where's the Lyft driver? I was like, I don't know. Like, it's been five, about five minutes since I woke up and he's still nowhere in sight. He was like, what do you see around you? I was like, it's nothing. It's dark and there's trees and I'm scared. I was literally about to be in tears crying. I was like, I see a house. It's kind of far away, but that's all I see. He was like, is the keys in the car? I'm like, yeah. Okay, then take the car and drive it home. I mean, steal the, this man's car? Me? How I? Ninja? T me? To steal the car? Eh! You don't pass my sif. Eh! I was like, if I steal this car, it's a possibility that I can get pulled over. He could call and say his car was stolen, and then I can go to jail. No, I'm not about to steal this car. He was like, do you have any other option? Will you have any other choice? What you going to do? So, get in the car, get in the driver's seat, and drive that car home. I was like, okay, I'll take it. But just promise me you'll bail me out if I go to jail because, <laughs> because Orange is not the new block. It's, it's Saturday. So, if I go to jail on this Saturday, that means I might not even be able to get McBell until Monday because the judge don't even work on the week. Like, the um, back seat, walk around to the front seat, to the driver's side, open the door, I get in the car. I'm like, okay, I'm in the car, but I don't know where to go. He's like, 
put on your GPS. Are you fucking dumb? <laughs> the drunkness just went out the door. I was about to drive this. I was about to drive the shit out this car. This this car's fitting to know me. This car's fitting to know me. Know me. I'm like, all right, here I go. And the way the car was, it was a backed up into the tree. So when you drive out, it's like this long, I guess, driveway. So I could just drive forward and make a left. Or I can make it right, but it looked like it was a dead end that way. So I'll be making a left. So I put the car in drive and I started driving. And then I see the left driver coming back. I said, oh shit, babe, the man, he coming back. I don't do illegal shit. Like, I don't. I'm not the one. So, I put the car back in park. My thought process was, he coming. I'm climbing my ass back in the back seat. I'm go through the back door. And I'm just going to run. And I'm going to run as far as I can to get away from here. So, he don't catch me. And then, where I get to somewhere where I'm safe. I'm just going to call d Lou to pick me up. Deshaun, I'm just going to call Deshaun to pick me up. I'll get to the back. My slow ass. By the time I get to the back seat, he already in the car. He was already in the car. So, plan failed. The left driver, he's back. He's in the, he's in the car right now. He said, he in the car right now? I said, yeah. He's in the car right he's in the, he's in the car right now. He said, alright, put him on the phone. Mind you, we talking about the man. And he right there. He right there and we whisper and talk about him. Said, Excuse me, sir. My husband wants to talk to you. He'll be a whole murderer. And my husband won't have a conversation with him. If... I don't, if she's not here in 15 minutes, you're going to wish you never took her to McLean. You're going to wish you never took her to Virginia. He was steady trying to explain to him. He was like, no, no, I'm so sorry. I, I did. He was like, my husband's like, I don't want to hear none of that shit you talking about. I don't care if it's 30, 45 minutes away. She, you better speed. You better be here in 15 minutes. So, I ain't never heard my husband talk like this before. It's kind of, it was kind of turning me on a little bit. He all of me. Speaking of the devil. Hello? Yeah, don't, don't got no dragon fruit. You gotta get something else. Okay, um I will just take the sunset one. I sunset think. sunrise. Or sun, or sun, yeah, sun what? Sunset sunrise? Yeah, that one. I'm so sorry, like, no, this is what happened. My last passenger, she left her wallet. He said wallet or cell phone. She left her wallet, her cell phone, something in my car, and she kept calling me to bring it. She said she needed it tonight. So I just thought that I could just take it to her on the way. On the way? On the way? We 40 minutes past my house. What? Bro, what are you talking about? No, what makes you think this was a good idea for you to take me 40 minutes past my house to take someone their cell phone, wallet, whatever it was at 3 o'clock in the morning and you are a male and I'm a female. So we finally get home and he get, I'm getting out the car and he's steady apologizing. He's still apologizing. And I was like, and I hope you wasn't charging me this whole time. Like, while you drove all the way to McLean, Virginia. Remember how I said it was supposed to be $11? It was $80. I think it was like $83. That ride was $83 and it was supposed to be $11. It left. I Instagram messaged Lyft. I wrote them a review. I emailed them. I did everything in the book. FYI, if you ever want to get to get the attention of, if you ever want to get the attention of a company or a brand that did you wrong, tweet. They will get back to you ASAP. I ended up having to do, like, do a report. Um, they said they was going to do an investigation. They promised me that, because I was like, I don't want this ever to happen to anyone else because this was ridiculous. Not only did you all... Did your driver basically kidnap me and I was forced to basically almost steal his car and that could have put me in a position where I got in trouble with the law even though I'm, I think I probably would have been able to get out of it but still it put me in a bad situation I would never want this to help happen to anyone they were like we're gonna take care of it we're gonna take care of the driver we're gonna make sure this never happens again um 
We're so sorry. They credit back my account, of course. They didn't charge me anything for the ride. Give me a credit, although I'm scarred for life. I haven't been in a lift since. I'm only taking Ubers and driving. Like, I can't mess with, like, I'm scarred. I'm scarred right now, okay, I'm scarred. I'm scarred. Anyways, that is the story about how I basically had to steal my Lyft driver's car. No, I didn't drive it all the way home, but say he never did come out that house, I would have took that car. I would have been gone. Like, like the timing just happened that as soon as I was pulling off, he was coming out and I got scared. I got, again, it was not funny back then, but right now, in this present time, three years later, I can laugh about it. Let me know in the comments if you have any stories or what you would have done in this case. Would you have taken the car if the man didn't come out the house? Would you have taken the car or what would your plan have been? Let me know so if I'm ever in that predicament again, I'll have a plan B. Deuces!